and welcome back. Today I'm looking at a program called Claro Writing Helper. Now if you have any issues with writing an essay or planning or organising this could be really helpful. A lot of students will open up a Word document for example, bullet point their ideas down, work their way down that way. Some it works for, some it doesn't. So this will help you actually put your question in, break down your question so you understand it, structure it, find sources, then break down those sources and organise them all then review what you've done to make sure you've not missed anything and then publish it in a Word document. The seven steps you can do. It's not going to write your essay for you. That comes from you. but It's going to help you structure it and organise it. So let's start a new project. Now there's my name there. So a title. I was just going online as a demo and I found a few websites. So I'm going to go with, let's go with South American Economy. That would do. Add a short title if you want. Then your reference style. Now it's really important if you're just starting studying to get your reference style right because you can lose marks. So I'm going to use Harvard. So at the moment this reference is using basic reference style. So I'll say again, when you're doing an essay or assignment, make sure you reference correctly. Check with check with your library, the university or college. Is it a thousand word essay? Say a thousand words, but you can add any number you want in there, even ten thousand. So we'll go with a thousand. Then you can have your start date. So let's do a start date, for example, next week, say the 11th midweek, and then due date. That's all set up to go. So you've entered your essay information, click continue. Got your title at the top. Now, don't just skip through this quick. It's important to actually understand these structural verbs and your concept. So what I mean by looking at structural verbs is Say you're reading the question and you read it several times, you need to consider hidden assumptions behind the question. So it's all about defining key words. So in structural verbs, you need to understand exactly what they're asking you. If I come to the right here, it says look at your structural verbs. It's got a list here. So let's select, for example, justify. I'll scroll down and then it will give you the verb there. Show adequate grounds for decision or conclusion by supporting it with sufficient evidence and argument. So you, you might be okay, you might be able to skip off this and go straight into the structuring option straight away. But it's so important that you actually understand the question. So many people start an essay assignment but don't really understand the question. So take your time with that and click close. Another option here, if I just tap on each word there, I could add those words to consider your open concepts. So these are words that you want to actually explore and define within your essay. Now, if you're into mind mapping, you select mind map here. Now, I've got Claro Read the full version, so I can use Claro Ideas, which is part of Claro Read. And if you get on well with visual mapping, you might do it on paper, for example, then you can use the visual map, select my map. And then you can add your concept words in there and start working out what, how you want to go with your essay and your title. My map is not for everyone. But it's really good for some people to visualise their question and what they want to do. So there we go. So we've done details and question. Now structure. Now as I said earlier, a lot of people tend to bullet point, which is great in a Word document, and you can cut and paste where you want them. This can work in the same way, but much easier by dragging and dropping and using colour coding to help and use colours to help you separate paragraphs and topics. So we know my essay is called South America Economy. So my first paragraph, which is section one, I'm going to call this, I think, exciting, just an introduction. And then I want my second paragraph. I should call that. I was looking on a website earlier and apparently the biggest economies in South America are Mexico and Brazil. Though I'm not sure Mexico is South America. Is it more North America? Well, let's put that in anyway. I'm going to put Mexico in. That's my second paragraph. And my third paragraph, I'm just going to pop in Brazil. And you can add as many paragraphs as you want. Section 4 or 5. If you want more sections, come to the top here, you can add another section. And there we go. And add as many paragraphs and sub-paragraphs as you want. If you don't want it, click back on it. And then use a the little delete option, remove. So that's good. I've got my first paragraph introduction. Second and third paragraph. What I'll do actually for you, so you can see, I put paragraph two and paragraph three. Actually, it's a bit untidy there. I'm going to capitalise that. So three paragraphs to work with, 
and you can drag these where you want so I'm not going to do we won't do this anyway but you can drag introduction down and put it underneath one at the top so I'm going to drag that back up I want to take my introduction I actually want to break it down so I know what I'm working with in my introduction paragraph so I'm going to break my introduction down into two sub paragraphs so I'm going to select the option here sub paragraph let's add another one click back on introduction what I want to talk about in the first part of my introduction I just put the history of Mexico economy from 1824. So that's the first part of my introduction. Then I could put in my second part of my introduction. And you'll probably see I make this up a little bit, but you get the idea. So there we go. I've got my introduction and two sub paragraphs underneath my introduction. Then I can do the same with Mexico, break that down if I want, and Brazil. When you do as many sub paragraphs if you want, so bear that in mind. And yep, you might decide, actually, I want to talk about Brazil before Mexico, so you can drag that into position. Also, you might be doing it and decide, actually, Brazil economy from 1824, I want to make that into an actual paragraph, not a sub-paragraph. Well, come up here, and you've got out then. You've now made it into a paragraph or main topic. And again, I can indent it again, so it sits underneath introduction as part of my two paragraphs. Now, I have a quick point here. I'm going to click on... Uh, history of Mexico economy you can add tasks by tapping on it tasks will be whatever you need to do about that topic so it could be you need to do research to that topic so I'm just going to put I'll just put research from world research from WorldCat and JSTOR sources and there we go the tasks are just for you to access so you don't forget. So if I come to the right, I can tick it when I've actually done that task if I wanted to as well. Now at the end, it will tell you if you missed any tasks. So you can't just publish and miss loads of stuff. It will tell you before you publish. So we've actually created structure, but we haven't had anything yet. We've added no information, just structure and outline or draft if you work. Come to the left, we come to sources. Now this is where you can use sources. So you can find them online or Maybe you've got a journal PDF in your computer and you can upload it onto the sources option where it turns into a PDF anyway for you. So, for example, if you wanted to open something up from your computer, select the open option. Now, if you want to use a website, if I click on the option here, I was looking at something earlier. I told you, didn't I? Here we are. There we go. So, we've got this website here. I'm going to copy the link and I'm going to paste it into my Claro Writer. Control V. I want you to do it and import it in for me watch as a PDF. So you can gather all your sources and just bring them into this sources option to work with. Go to the right, you can see the source there where I got it from. But it's also indicating on the right there. It's missing stuff. Citation data incomplete. If I tap on it, now you can start adding the information that it's missing. So title. It doesn't always grab it, so the title is the origin of state societies in South America. I'll copy that and then you can paste that into title and then author. Just to let you know, not all websites have authors by the way. So always have a good look. Now if it's Harvard and the website doesn't have an author, then you put the website name. But that varies on APA for psychology or Scholar for law. So bear that in mind what you're doing. Right, let's go back to Clara Writer. So I won't fill that in, fill that all in, and you've got your published date as well. I'll put that in quickly as an example, and then click Save. And you see it's turned to a tick because you've added all your information in there ready. But that's good, we've got the source, but you don't even know what source you want to use yet. You've got to read it, decide whether you want to use it in your work. So what we do is we scroll down. Let's just say, I will use the abstract, because I didn't download the actual journal PDF. Come to the top. You see we've got your paragraphs that you structured earlier. Now, you haven't got your sub-paragraphs, just your main paragraphs. So paragraph one was introduction. I'm going to select that. And you might say, actually, I'm going to use that in my sub-paragraph on, for example, Mexico. So if I highlight paragraph there, and if I use the little highlight option, you've color-coded it on the right. So you, you can choose whether or not you want to add that to your introduction. And then I'll come down a bit more. I might go, oh, I want to use that paragraph. And maybe I want to use that quote in my Mexico paragraph. Or again, I might want to use it in my introduction. And again, tap on it. And it color codes it on the right for you. So you can just gather your sources and organize them. 
Now if I come to the right, this way you can then decide, use these little options and we can add it to what's called snippets. Now we haven't gone there yet, it's the next option down, but it adds those sources to that section of introduction so you can use them. Let's give it a go, so I'll click one, I've added them both. Come to the left and go to snippets and you can see they're now added underneath introduction. Now if you remember, I wanted to add one of them, well both of them actually, one to Mexico. Let's add the other one to Brazil. And there you go, I've now added that information and quotes to my sub paragraph from introduction. Now let's look at our snippets option. You've done your research, got your sources, and now you can organize them. You can move them about up and down, left and right, whatever you want to do with them. So if I drag them down, you might actually send that into your Mexico paragraph too. If I'm going to bring it back up, I want it underneath the history of Brazil economy there. Now on the right, can you see where we got those quotes from earlier? So what I could then do is go to my first quote here, and I could say, right, I'm going to paraphrase that. I'm not going to use a direct quote, so I could then type. You get the idea with that, you can just paraphrase your work quickly. So I'll paraphrase that so it's not a direct quote, and then I could select citation. Now have a look to the left. You can see now I've added that information, and then you can carry on writing your first part of your introduction. And there we go. And have a look to the left. Can you see where well, you've got your quote, which is paraphrased? And I've also added my own information. So you're starting to build and write your essay and assignment. Let's now go to the second option here. Again, we've got another source up there, but this time I might want to use it as a direct quote. So I want to control C and I'm going to paste it in there as a direct quote. And again, I'm citing it. Now have a look over here. You can see where it's now cited that quote for me. Once you've done that, we can then go to review to have a look at it see what you think and there we go that's how it's looking now don't worry too much about you've got no bibliography or reference list yet it just gives you a quick review but if you if i circle here the citations you can see where i paraphrased it there and done a direct quote there so once you're done there we can then go to publish but before you actually publish it just double check here it says here snippets Remember those snippets where we're organising and adding references and stuff? You can check if there are any left to edit. So I come to the right, it'll take you straight back there, but of course I've got none left to edit. I've done them all. And you can see they're not empty there. So I want to go back to publish. And again, you've got the option with sources. Sources with missing fields, there is none because I've put them all in. And again, tasks. Remember those tasks earlier where I did one task? You can check tasks and there it is. I've ticked it to say it's done. And there you go, go back to publish. Then last of all, how many words? Now target was a thousand, but it's a demo, so you can see I've only done 65. But you can come to the right and you can review it there, see how it looks. So I'm now ready to publish. I'm gonna select publish to Word. And there it all is, and let's have a look what we got. So in the introduction, my first sub paragraph was paraphrase because I did it in my own words. And then my second quote, you can see there, it's a direct quote, and then you've got your in-text citation there as well. But a quick point here, it uses a referencing system in Word. So if I come up to Word here and select References, I'm actually going to use standard second edition Harvard. If I click on it, and you can see how the bibliography's changed underneath, and that's just standard Harvard referencing system. But there are variations. Now I'll leave a link my YouTube channel where you can install this Harvard referencing system and other referencing systems into Word if you need them as well. And there we go, and that should get you up and running. Thanks for watching.